Hi everyone and welcome for the Astrology Capsule of June 2018. So, uh, June 2018 starts with what the month of May left us. Um, it, 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 it created a trine and uh, a big triangle, in fact, made of three trines and uh, water signs. Uh, made with Jupiter in Scorpio, Neptune in Pisces, and Venus in Cancer. So this is very beautiful, a great intuition, a great opening towards intuition, towards um, inspiration as well. So the thing that doesn't move much is that trine with Jupiter and Neptune. This is very strong and um, Neptune is in Pisces, so it's actually a ruling the sign where it is. And Jupiter in Scorpio brings a lot of depth to our feeling, to our emotional world, and it goes into the deepness of our subconsciousness, unconsciousness. So it connects those two together with a uh, Neptune in Pisces is very broad, very vast, very big, and it connects all that together. And that other planet there in Cancer is very key, very important. And uh, end of May, early June, it's Venus uh, playing that role in Cancer. And it's really, Venus is just so sweet. It just brings this um, feeling of, oh wow, this intuition, this feeling of what is deep in our emotions, this really developing our intuition is something that will be shining to us, very appealing to most of us and uh, something really nice. So if you're someone very sensitive that has a great intuition and you usually feel that your left, your, your intuition, you know, you, you don't have much room to talk about it. Well, end of May, early June should be a time for you to, to share and, and spread this and people will uh, most likely love it more than usually. So that's a very beautiful moment and uh, Venus is just opening the door to this um, inner world, actually. And then what is really key is, uh, is the role of Mercury and that all starts at the new moon of June. On the new moon of June, Mercury is entering Cancer at zero degree and uh, Venus is uh, soon leaving Cancer. It's at 29 something degrees. It's just leaving Cancer the next day. And, um, and we see that um, it's, it's a great sign because a new moon indicates that, okay, it was the last day of the energies going down and down and down and lower and lower and lower. And now the energy will start increasing, especially on the psychic level and the emotional level, mental level. Um, all those energies will start growing again, you know. And, um, and we see that it, it shows what is coming for us. It shows that, oh, from now on, uh, we won't be into this uh, sweet, um, pleasing, appealing energy of Venus towards that uh, trine again with Jupiter and Neptune, because the Cancer planet down there is very key. It won't be Venus anymore playing that role. It will be Mercury playing that role. And Mercury represents more our intelligence, our intellect, our mental abilities, and um, so there's quite a shift. It, it, Venus was more a heartfelt um, um, sweetness, a heartfelt love, um, appeal towards this intuition. And now it's going to be more Mercury. So we'll actually go deeper into all this and we'll add to this intuition our thoughts and our intellect, our analyzes. Um, capabilities. So very interesting to go deeper into this. And that's very key because intuition is all about a mix of our heart, our feelings and our um, mind, our ability to think. So it's a connection between both and we see that Venus opened the door because it, it's appealing so we just go there naturally. And then after a while Mercury goes deeper and adding more information and also adding the possibility to communicate with this intuition and to communicate with the world that have been presented to us through this great triangle of water. When I say that world, I mean the intuition that comes to us, the ideas, the, you know, the, some kind of inner voice or something special that tells us, oh, I would like that. You know, we start by just liking it and being attracted by it. And then our mind starts really um, connecting things with it and making the connections, right? And things get clearer. 
with Mercury coming in. And so this is naturally happening, especially with the new moon that shows us that, oh, that's a really important switch because it happened exactly um, at the new moon. And that's when Mercury is entering Cancer and Venus will be, the, next, the day right after that, will be leaving Cancer. So we see that, okay, it's a time for us to go deeper into this, um, this um, appeal that we had towards intuition and um, start making the connections. So very, very important to see this evolution. Um, it reminds me of how do we meditate? And this is really important. You know, some people, they meditate and they try to, you know, think about nothing, you know, create the void or, or also they can also try to focus on an idea and they kind of force themselves into thinking about one specific thing so much and that is the, the topic or the, or the goal of this meditation or also uh, there's guided meditation where you have to focus, you have to follow what is given and... Um, so this can be very good, but also if it creates too much pressure in our mind, then it creates also a pressure on our nervous system and it makes a meditation that is way less um, effective. So a really good trick, very simple and easy for meditation is just to follow topics, subjects, ideas, images that really inspires us naturally that we don't have to force ourselves into thinking about that topic and so on. And because when we force ourselves, it creates tension on our, on our nervous system. And when there's tension in the nervous system, any other type of energies that are not necessarily so much harmonious can come and, and take part into the meditation, meaning that there can be some, um, you, we could compare it to, you know, if you listen to the radio and then you start losing the signal and there's all that kind of, rubbish noise that starts being in, on the radio and you hear the more than the rubbish noise than what you would like to hear from the radio so we could compare it to that right when we're meditating we kind of our we have our antennas out there on turn on and we're just um, listening right but if you start creating tension into your own system then uh, tension will kind of um makes the, the connection not so clear anymore. So that's something really important to be aware of. So it's really nice to see that Venus is starting that great trine with that great triangle in the water signs with Jupiter and Scorpio, Neptune and Pisces. Um, Venus is this planet in Cancer that, is, that makes us attracted to this intuition, to this strength of those water signs. So it's, it's natural, it just flows naturally, especially with the trines. It's very beautiful, very meditative um, aspect, actually. So we were just brought into this um, region, into this beautiful place of, of, of intuition, and we, we start you know, connecting with some images and so on, and we just appreciate that, and we just, we go there naturally. And when Mercury comes in, then it's time to make the connections mentally. You know, because we've been naturally attracted into beautiful places. And meditation was very easy because it was something that was attractive to us. So we wanted to go there naturally, so we did. And, um, and now Mercury helps us to make the connections with those intuitions. So you see the progression, very, very important. Especially since uh, Venus, right after that, will have, um, as soon as Mercury really gets uh, connected into that trine, get at the right degree in Cancer, when it really creates that um, water triangle again. At that moment, Venus is making an opposition with Mars in Aquarius. So Venus will be then in Leo and it will be in opposition with Mars. So we see that in this attraction repulsion um, dynamic with Venus and Mars, with our desires and you know, what we want to attract, what we want to pull towards us into those two directions. And there's a tension from the opposition. And right after that, not long after, uh, Venus will get into a square with Jupiter at the very end of the month of June. So um, we see that Venus after will have a few tensions coming for Venus. So that shows us how important it is to turn from this natural appreciation from Venus and Cancer with that water tri big triangle 
uh, with Jupiter and Neptune to switch from just this natural attraction to move towards something um, involving more our thoughts, uh, you know, making the connections and using our Mercury. Because if we do focus on that, then the tension around Venus will be not so much important uh, because we'll be so busy with Mercury because the focus is there. But if we just want to, you know, longer on on this this energy of, oh, I'm very attracted to this and that, and we start being a bit, you know, involved into, um, I just want to, I just don't want to spend time in some kind of ambience where I'm feeling so good and so on. And this kind of new age ambience um, that is not so much constructive because it's just about, you know, following where you want to be. It's nice to do, right? And as, 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 as I described, it's very important, for example, when we meditate to start the process. But at some point, um, it's important to switch to um, more Mercury mode and start making more connections that will allow us to even communicate. Uh, depending on our level of sensibility, right? We'll be able to uh, communicate more um, with, um, with those... Um, regions where we've been brought to okay so that sounds very subtle maybe but if you apply that into just your normal life you just you can just make the connections and and it all fits right so um yeah so that's about venus and mercury how they will switch in cancer uh, venus starts and then it will be mercury's turn and don't forget to follow that mercury change because if you like venus so much and you're um, that type of person that is a little bit lazy sometimes we like to just you know just stay with venus because it's so pleasant right <laughs> so we want to stay with this rich sweet energy um, but you know sometimes we won't work so much but uh, it's important in this case specifically to just follow with mercury because venus will be in tension after that so if you stay there, it won't be time to be there anymore and you'll feel the tension because of that. So that's very, very important. And then there's also the full moon of June that is important. Actually, the full moon of June is, it is that moon, that full moon where the moon will be in conjunction with Saturn. And we've talked about it uh, quite a few times, uh, you know, the connection between Saturn and the moon, how Saturn is with, because Saturn is uh, retrograding since a few months, uh, it's, it's following the rhythm um, of the full moons. So um, I'll describe that a bit more uh, specifically. So the full moon, basically, since it takes 28 days for a full moon to happen, 29 actually, sorry, um, it, it's slowly it's it's uh, it's changing signs certainly but also it's um, it's losing a few degrees and since saturn is retrograding it's losing the same amount of degrees as the full the progression of the full moon right so saturn is not changing sign because it's very slow and it's retrograding but the full moon is changing sign every month but it's also losing a few degrees from one sign to another. So let's say the full moon was at 20 degrees in, um, in, in Sagittarius. Next month it will be, let's say, um, 18 or something like that in uh, Capricorn. So it, th this didn't happen, it's just an example. So I'm just showing you how that progression is happening. So since Saturn is retrograding, it, it stays at the same number of degrees as the full moon happening okay but of course the type of aspect will be changing from a square to a trine to a conjunction and so on but they remain connected for about seven months because of that retrog retrogradation of saturn so that's very important uh, because it's a specific cycle that happened at a moment where saturn was already connected to the full moon when it started to retrograde. So that's quite interesting uh, to, to, to follow that thread. And this time, this month in June, it's the month where uh, they are in conjunction, Moon and Saturn in conjunction in, in um, Capricorn, where 
Saturn is ruling the sign and uh, the moon is in exile because it's actually ruling Cancer where the sun is because when you have a full moon you always have sun and moon opposing each other. They're in a position, um, 180 degrees uh, aspect. And um, so we see that Saturn and the moon, this connection with the Divine Mother, Saturn, this aspect of the laws of nature, this wisdom that is behind the laws of nature, but also this life force that is behind it, and the moon, which is this archetype of the mother, um, all those two together in Capricorn, just bring all that work that happened in Cancer with Venus and Mercury we just talked about. Now the sun is there, and it's the sun represents our consciousness, so it's bringing everything we developed in Cancer um, to our consciousness and all that with this opposition with Moon and Saturn in conjunction, it's kind of bring all that work into the structure of Saturn. And that's what is so interesting because it helps us to draw conclusions from this experience of, you know, of that trine, of that great water triangle, you know? It helps us to draw conclusions from this experience with our intuition and draw the conclusions and acquire it and anchor it in our own structure, in our own life structure. So that's a very important full moon. The full moon of June, very, very, very key. Um, I really encourage you to be sensitive to that uh, moment. It's gonna be the, at the end of June. I think it's June 28th, if I'm right. Um, a full moon of June. Again, it's, it's gonna be that conjunction with Saturn and moon in Capricorn. So be very, um, try to draw those conclusions actually. Try to find out what you learned from this past month and how you could actually use what you learned into your daily life and absorb it into your daily life. Absorb it into, because you know our daily life is very key. Our daily life represents how we live. So it really represents our incarnation because that's how our incarnation is, is going, right? It's going through our life. So our daily life is the expression of our incarnation. And with Saturn and Moon in Capricorn, we have a change to anchor something, especially with this work in the Cancer sign, to anchor all that work into the structure of our daily life, of our incarnation. And that will then help us into realizing our, our mission, you know, what we have to do in this lifetime. And uh, so it's very, very precious to connect with this beautiful energies of the Divine Mother. And here in Canada, it's going to be a Mother's Day tomorrow because I'm right now May 12th and uh, Mother's Day will be uh, Sunday tomorrow, May 13th. So it's very interesting to connect to make to talk about that and do these capsules on the day uh, right before Mother's Day because it's so connected with this um, divine mother archetype of the nature. You know, nature is nothing else than the coat of the divine mother. So it's really its emanations, and that's what allows us to live this incarnation, to be on earth, to have this physical body and be here. So that's beautiful. Um, I really encourage you to work with this full moon of June. It's going to be amazing. Thank you so much to watch and you can of course uh, subscribe, share and, um, and also um, ask any question uh, just below the video in the comments section. I'm always very happy to answer any questions so uh, please do. Thank you so much and see you for the next Astrology Capsule.